I am joined by four Producers Club members to give you the lowdown on visiting the Volcano Bay, Universal Orlando's water theme park. This is episode 519 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. It is me, Lee. I am hosting this episode on my own. I have given Chris, Tracy and Michelle the week off, but I have replaced them with more than ample, ample replacement. So joining me to talk Volcano Bay, coming to us from 10 minutes from Universal Orlando as she passes it every day on the way to work, is Hope Brigham. Hey Hope. Hey, (laughs) excited to be here. I I had to get that in there. (laughs) Um, and coming <laughs> to us bad. from Indianapolis in Indiana is Rachel Hoffmeyer. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And coming to us from Greenwood, Indiana, just eight miles down the road from Rachel, which is very interesting, is Crystal King. <laughs> hey, Crystal. Hello, everyone. And finally, coming f- just up the road from Chris, apparently, uh, Boca Raton, Florida, that is Carl Plunkett. Hey, everybody. What a small world it truly is. It sure is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Guys, as I have mentioned on the show... <sighs> and talked about it at home we don't actually cover volcano bay very much on this podcast which i feel quite sad about because tracy and i aren't particularly water park people um michelle hasn't gone for a while chris is our volcano bay expert and he hasn't been since it reopened after lockdown to be fair um which is why i've invited you guys on because you guys go quite often apparently crystal in this case has literally just come back which makes it perfect last week yes (laughs) nice um just just before we get into it, having just had a wander around, that park is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it is. I was telling my kids when we were there, I said, you don't feel like you are right next to the highway here. You are literally by a highway and you don't really realize it. Yeah, it's very immersive. I mean, I love going there just kind of for the scenery, you know, being able to look around. You almost feel like you're in Hawaii or something, you know. <laughs> I like to tell people I'd rather go to my fake beach with my fake volcano than go to a real beach. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. I I feel like I was so bad for years because I drove past it and I was like, I kind of just see the volcano and then I just see like stairs with slides. I don't know what it's really like inside. And when I went, I was just blown away at the detail and everything with all the plants and flowers. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's one of those things I know when Tracy and I visited that it's, you look at it as a size, like a plot of land, and it's quite small. But once you are in it, it feels huge. Mm-hmm. It really does. Once you get yeah. like past that initial walkway and it just opens up in front of you, it feels massive. Um, and I cannot wait. Have any of you guys stayed in the Volcano Bay View room at Cabana Bay yet? I have I, twice. <sighs> I have yeah. too. I did. It was technically a standard, but the gentleman <laughs> at the front desk was like, you're going to be able to see a little bit of Volcano Bay. And it was so fun to people watch. I cannot yeah. wait. You'll yeah, no, it's really nice. And honestly, with the light package at nighttime, I'm surprised they haven't had a nighttime event or something because it really, the whole park lights up beautifully at night. Yeah, I think there was rumors for a while that they were going to do some sort of light show on the volcano, but it just never happened, which yeah. is a shame. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracy and I have already got our plan. We're going to get up as, as early as we can on the morning after we check in, and have a get, go to Bayline and get our breakfast and just sit in front of the windows and have our breakfast, <laughs> lo- watching the sun come <laughs> up. I cannot wait. That'll be nice. Yes. yes. Right. So first thing I want to kind of get into um, for anyone, because obviously we've got a lot of new listeners, and I think it's those defectors from down the road that are coming over because they've been disillusioned with the maps. <laughs> And I can't blame them for that. Um, So obviously one of the things for anybody going to Volcano Bay is getting to the park from wherever it is you may be staying. And I'm sure we've all had different experiences. So if anyone wants to jump, has anyone gone to Volcano Bay not staying on site? Yes, I have. Okay, so Hope and Kyle, do you kind of want to run us through getting to the park from coming off property? Yeah, pretty much when you go to the parking garage and you pay for your parking, let them know you're going to Volcano Bay and it's a whole separate side. Instead of going to the left, you're going to go to the right and you'll park and then there's just a whole line of buses that you'll hop on right under the parking garage there. Mm -hmm. I will honestly say too that 
when I first heard it was, oh, you have to park and then take a bus. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, what are we getting into? But they keep the buses lined up. So yeah. Honestly, it's a really quick, seamless experience. That's it's good. really not bad. Yeah, they do really well with it. Yeah, I never had a wait or anything. You pretty much go through security and jump right on a bus. There's always about four waiting in my experience. Yep. Do you guys still have to pay for parking at the Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you still pay regular parking, but if you're a pass holder, premier or preferred, I think you yeah, you get free parking still. Yep. So it's a separate parking area from where everyone going to the theme park. Yeah. Park. So when you're going through, it's the garage on the right. Okay. You'll be on the first floor usually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Rachel and Crystal, the one percenters here who have tackled it from <laughs> being on site. Where have we stayed yes. and how easy was that? Well, I stayed at the Portofino. Oh, you and... are a one percent. I wasn't wrong when I said that, was I? <laughs> <laughs> it is a great hotel. Um, you basically just get on a bus um, and then it takes you over. I think the buses run every 15 minutes. And from the it actual hotel? From the hotel. Okay. Um, and then from the Portofino, it will go over to the Hard Rock, stop and pick up the guests at the Hard Rock, and then it goes straight to Volcano Bay. Okay, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Well, mm-hmm. I'm a Cabana Bay devotee, so <laughs> it's a beautiful like four minute commute because you just yes. walk right there and you have your own private entrance with your own security mm-hmm. and they just, it, it couldn't be easier. A lot of times if um, I'm heading back to the hotel to hang out at the pool, I'll just walk the extra five minutes and hang out at Volcano Bay instead. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of the way we did it. We were staying at Royal Pacific and we ended up because we wanted to go and have a look around Cabana Bay because we hadn't been before. So we, um, this is interesting for anyone who wants to do a different way. So we got, we went through the moving, like through City Walk, across the moving walkway to the security hub, down into the bus loop area, got a bus over to mm-hmm. Cabana Bay, had a wander around Cabana Bay and then jumped in through the same way you did, Rachel. That And that walk is gorgeous as well. Like yeah. that little tunnel under the under the highway is awesome, and then just that again, that reveal into the entrance of Volcano mm-hmm. Bay is oh, it's just universal know how to do a reveal. That just that, you yeah, look at, definitely. I oh. love that tunnel. I'm like, I can't believe you're going <laughs> under the highway with the music and the anticipation building, and you can look up and it's just a skylight. Like you would yeah. never know you're going under. Yeah, like the, the lo- highway road. Yeah. Amazing. The lo- the lights in that tunnel too are pretty cool. There are seashells. Oh, never <laughs> I always thought that was really neat. It's so, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It really is. The, uh, oh, I want to go. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, September. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we haven't got the tickets for it. And as I say, we're not really uh, okay. about people. We talked about this. They should do just an, an entrance ticket. Like a, you can't ride anything. Just go and have a wander around. You should do. Yeah. Even that. Yeah. I'm not a water park person either. I actually hate water slides, Mm -hmm. but I really enjoy that place because you've got the lazy river, you've got the wave pool, the fearless river. You can just sit Mm -hmm. and relax. I let my kids just go off to the slides. They do what they want to do. Mom gets to go in the lazy river. So I think it can be enjoyable, even if you don't really like slides and water parks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, Definitely. Yeah, that's about, isn't it? Because once you get to that point, you've got your tickets, you go through the usual entrance into the park, and then let's talk about, so we've already got one reveal, the sort of that entrance with the Volcano Bay logo across the front, you go into that little rotundary thing into the park, and then that meandering little path, and as that opens up to just that mm-hmm. reveal of the um, the wave pool with the volcano, is just, it is breathtaking. Yeah. It truly is. Yeah, it's is pretty gorgeous. incredible. <clears throat> can you guys remember the first time you saw it? Because obviously it'd have been different for you, Hope, because you drove past this, you've seen that volcano. But it's totally different. I feel like when you're walking at it, just from eye level, walking up to it, it really has that grand reveal. And I think yeah. seeing it with the water, and you can see the waterfall coming down. Like, it's just gorgeous. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I can remember driving by when they were still building the volcano, just kind of waiting and waiting and getting so excited when I finally went, like I almost shed a tear. It was just so beautiful. And I was so happy to finally be there. <laughs> the first time I went, I went kind of reluctantly cause I'm not a water ride person. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I've never ridden any of the water rides at the park. Wow. So I thought, well, if I don't like water rides, I don't think I'm going to enjoy a water park. And then you walk in and it's just 
breathtaking and they do such a great job. And I think it's different since I'm not having to like walk around in wet clothes and you're in a swimsuit. It's a little, it's a little different and the water's, you know, designed to be sw- swimming. <laughs> so I think it's, yeah. it smells a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that Florida water smell. Do you know what? I do love that Florida water smell because it makes me know I am there. That's the difference, I suppose. It reminds me oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. The smell of pirates. I know it's a sacrilege, <laughs> I know, but the, the smell of the water in Pirates of the Caribbean is yes. just. Oh. Crystal, <laughs> you were there right. last week. Can you remember right. the first time you saw it? Like that big reveal. Yeah, well, we went for the first time last summer in, what was that? The years just run together. What is it? 2021, June of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So that was actually right when kind of the pandemic was starting to come back and, but it still wasn't as busy. And yeah, you walk in and you just kind of see that volcano in front of you. And I've seen pictures of it, but it was just, you talked about that tunnel as you go in and then you see that volcano and it's just like, wow, I'm in a different place. I'm not in Orlando anymore. It's so strange. I know we talked about it when when the parks were closed. I'm surprised that they opened Volcano Bay as soon after opening the theme parks as they did because like when you're trying to socially distance, like you can't wear a mask. You're not going to socially distance. It's like I, we genuinely, I think Chris and I talked about it on the podcast at the time, we genuinely expected it to be at least six months before they opened Volcano Bay. Yeah. And, yeah. Did anyone go during that time, like that initial reopening period? Oh, yeah. I went a handful of times and that first week they opened up, it was kind of awesome because I mean, there was maybe a hundred people in the park (laughs) Wow! and it was, you just walked on everything. You kind of felt like you owned the place, you know, it was, it was quite an experience. I'm happy I was able to go. That was the thing. You look back at that time, like the theme parks in general, it's like, you're never going to see those theme parks like that ever again. It was a ghost town. And that first week they opened up, we stayed at Portofino because it was so incredibly cheap. I think it was like two hundred a night. Oh and we God. had wow. we had fast we had fast passes. And at the park, I mean, it didn't even do anything because there was no one there. So it was kind of <laughs> pointless. There's literally no one there. But yeah, it was it was a good time. I'm happy I was able to make it there. As the host of this show, they were express passes, by the way, Kyle, not fast passes. <laughs> oh well, yeah, you got, got me. <laughs> Hope Harry look- Potter land? Yes, don't too? start. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you look like you were going to say something there. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it really was crazy. I remember feeling like, this sounds weird, but I feel safer at the theme parks right now than like in my crowded grocery store where everyone's mm-hmm. like, I've heard hustle and bustle buying groceries. Yeah. I'm like, everybody was so spread out. You know, it was I- easy to maneuver if you felt crowded. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Right, so once we are in the parks, we have to tackle the usual things. So lockers, lounges, and cabanas is what I want to talk about next because there's quite a lot of options. Obviously, Mm -hmm. lockers, let's talk about lockers first. How easy uh, is that whole thing? I will say, so (laughs) the small lockers are the $10 lockers. So if you're just wanting to put your wallet, your phone, some of the more valuable things in, that's the $10 locker. And there's only in the locker area like one row of that and it's towards the back so you have to go all the way to the back you can use your tapu tapu or you put in a credit card you purchase that but you want to go there first if that's the locker you want because they're going to sell out quickly because there's few Mm -hmm. of them crystal coming in with the wisdom i didn't even (laughs) know about those i had my notes i had my (laughs) notebook out last week when i was there i'm like okay i've got to talk about this i've got to note this so but here's no, a, here's a quick question the, for you then, sorry, before we get in. So there's no free mm-hmm. lockers. You have to pay for all the lockers at the park. You do yes. have to pay for all the lockers. Okay. Yes. And they there's three different sizes, small, medium, and then a big locker. I think the big ones are maybe $20. So like 10, maybe like 16 and 20 maybe. Um, but the smaller lockers are less abundant. And if you're just wanting to put your valuables mm-hmm. in. And to be honest, I've never felt like my stuff was in jeopardy on my chair. No. Okay. I don't think I would leave my phone or like my wallet out there, but we left towels, shoes, you know, our bags out there on, on the chairs. I never felt like someone was going to like mess with my stuff or anything mm-hmm. like that. No, and we've never heard any instances of anybody complaining that they've had anything stolen from the park. So I suppose, yeah, it's just... Depends if what on your sensibilities really, doesn't it? If you like if you're that type of person that yeah. would worry, then it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. And you use your tapu tapu to un 
undo your locker again and you can link everybody that's with you on that. That's cool. So like my kids, they wanted, their phone, they wanted their phones halfway during the day. And instead of finding me to go open the locker, I just linked their Tapu Tapu. They could go to the locker, open it up, get what they wanted, and then they can go. Nice. That's a good tip. I didn't know that. Yeah. So how many banks of lockers are there around the parks? I'm assuming there's not just one, is there? Does anybody know I that? I think there's three. Yeah, I think three. All kind of spread out, I assume. Yeah. There's some, as soon as you come in, you go to the right, there's a big locker restroom area. Go mm-hmm. to the back of the park, um, behind the volcano, there's another one there. And then I think there's one... Then you keep going around to the left. Those ones at the back of the park are the, probably what the best ones to hit up because people are immediately yeah. going to go to the ones at the front of the park, aren't they? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The, only, the only down down thing to that would be if you're wanting to be in front of the volcano, if that's where you're going to be setting, yes. then you're in that the wall. to get to your locker. Yeah. You're going around the back, but you're right. There's less people back there. Yeah. I like to use the ones that if you go to the left as opposed to the right, because the ones to the right seem to be the most popular. Yeah. And if you go to the left, they're more likely to have the small lockers left over. And it's still pretty close to the the beach. So you're not adding that much time for, for walking. It's still amazing to me how much psychology plays into visiting a theme park. So <laughs> the ones on the right, because most people are right-handed, you tend to mm-hmm. go towards the right. It's so weird, isn't it, that if you keep your brain switched on, you know how to play the system at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say one thing kind of goes hand in hand with the lockers that I love about Volcano Bay is there's so much seating. Like there is seating everywhere, even though everyone yeah. kind of gravitates towards the volcano. I'm with you, Rachel. We normally go back to the left where those green and yellow big raft slides are i'd have to look up the name i'll probably butcher it but there's so much seating back there and you're right by the lockers you're right by food and beverage it's really nice yeah generally i try to go to the lockers all the way in the back because the ones on the right those first ones you go to i've had a handful of times where i'm trying to get in there and there's just like it seems like a hundred of people are in there trying to all get to their lockers at the same time and lots, it it can become of, quite a mess. A hundred semi-naked people trying to get their stuff out of yeah, lockers. It's not much. a good place All to be. Into each other, yeah, you know. no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like the best place to be, does it? No, no. So you kind of mentioned it there, lounges. So there's obviously there's the lounges, because there's two lots, isn't there? There's just the general lounges that are out and about, and then there's those sort of private ones where you get the lockbox and stuff. Has anyone had the sort of upchargey double shell? Okay, hands up. Up. Premium seating. How are that? Is that what it's called? Premium seating. Yeah, premium seating. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> How much yeah. are they, Hope, and what are they worth? Did you think they were worth? Well, the... I'm trying to remember. I want to say it was maybe we got a pretty good deal because it was like a slower day. So I want to say it was maybe like sixty dollars total, which is still expensive. Yeah, but. We were kind of just having, our goal was just to have a day of relaxation. So the nice thing, if you're really wanting to just sit and be lazy, which I know sounds, again, ironic if you're at a water park, but maybe if you have an annual pass or something and are coming Mm -hmm. back, it's a good way to do it. Um, But it's great because you have that server that comes right to your seat. So we were getting drinks, we were getting food. They had like this specialty flatbread that they only have there that we were like obsessed with. And now we're like, we want to spend all this money just to get this amazing flatbread again. It was so good. Yeah. Um, but I mean, again, it's still it's still expensive. We did it just to try it and say we did it. Um, but, you know, if it's only two people and you want to focus on kind of that VIP experience of having a server come to you and get drinks and food, then it can be worth it. Yeah. I did call and price out um, premium seating for last week because I thought, well, I can experience it so I can talk about it. (laughs) Last week, premium seating was $212. Wow. Man. And a cabana. I priced a cabana $878. Wow. Was that that the eight person one? I I told them I had five people in my party and it was a high level one. They're the big ones. Yeah. That's expensive. Expensive. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Wow. It really fluctuates depending on how many people they think yeah. are going to be there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even yeah. so, I think because they do two lots done, I think there's an eight person one, isn't there a 16 person yeah, one? Yeah, the mm-hmm. double decker one. Yeah. You get the whole thing. 
But uh, yeah. the pre the premium seating is almost worth it just for the private locker. You don't have to deal with mm-hmm. yes. all the people around the locker, yeah. and I mean, you're saving twenty bucks right there. So that's a pretty good deal. If you could get it for sixty bucks, I would definitely yeah. say do it. <laughs> Especially know? when it's not two hundred. That's a massive difference. <laughs> that's crazy. That's wild. That's a big difference. Wow. I, I don't think I would pay two hundred bucks for that. No, but not if it's when around you... sixty. I think that's pretty fair. You get a night in a hotel for that. Oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rachel, are you a are you a lounger girl? Are you a pri- a premium seating, or are you just I'm just going <laughs> to plunk my backside on the floor and this will do me? Yeah. I usually do one day at Volcano Bay and just enjoy the whole day there, but do a lot of like, oh, there's a little bit of time in the schedule, so I'm going to go and pop over. So if you're going to just pop over, not so useful to have premium seating. But I was curious if, see, they charge you for towels if you don't bring your own. If you do the premium seating, does that include a towel? Because if so, that's like lowering the cost quite, quite a bit. I know the private cabanas have towels included. I don't know about the premium seating, though. I don't sure. remember. Interesting. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm trying to look things up here, but the Universal website, it's very forthcoming on a lot of information I'm finding at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I do feel like I always get caught off guard. I go, and I think the towel's going to be free because at Cabana Bay... Yeah, you can have a towel for free at the pool. And so I've walked five minutes and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I have to pay. That seems to be the thing I always forget when I go to Volcano Bay is a towel. So then I'm getting on the bus soaking wet. <laughs> I'll add to that that the hotels, they tell you to take the towel. They say, take your towel from your room. Mm. That's fine. They're they're OK with that. OK, that's, that's a good, good tip. To know. Yeah, for definite. I'm just looking up because we haven't talked about it, how much a, a day ticket is to Volcano Bay. Um, and they start at eighty dollars, and a child's mm-hmm. only five dollars less. Hmm. Mm. I've always found that strange that the difference between an adult ticket and a child's ticket isn't generally that much. No, not really. But obviously, that price is going to fluctuate depending on the depending on the day you're going as well as does as anything in a theme park does. Um, just briefly before we get into the rest of it, do we feel eighty dollars for a day at Volcano Bay is good value? I think so. I think if you spend the whole day there, I mean, I have the three park pass, but yeah, I feel for a full day, I think 80 bucks is pretty fair. I think so too. I think because of the Tapu Tapu and not waiting, physically waiting in line all day, it, you can really make the most of your day. Yeah. I think too, if you break, break that price down per attraction. So if you're going to ride mm-hmm. almost every ride or, or slide or, or the the lazy river. I mean, that's pretty. I mean, you're breaking it down to like, I don't know, is that like five dollars per slide? Sounds going? right. Seems that's a good point. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's an interesting question then, because obviously, like the theme parks, if you go on a busy day, you might barely do anything. Is Volcano Bay? If you go on a busy day, is it like? Do your expectations need to be? lower because you're not going to get on much as they would be in the theme parks no. or even if it's no. rammed are you still going to get to do a fair amount of stuff in my experience you're going to wait for krakatua probably about 20 to 30 minutes even with the tap and tapu once you get there but every other ride is generally a walk on practically even on a pretty busy day okay you might wait five minutes ten minutes you know yeah taking advantage of the early park is also really helpful because mm-hmm. we got there early park and we rode the Krakatau water coaster two times in a row before the park opened. And that was just last week when it was super busy. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we were able, I think they did, not all the rides are open at early park, like your riv- like the Fearless River, mm-hmm. the Lazy River, those aren't open at that time. Yeah. So everyone kind of goes towards the water coaster, but we were able to knock it out a couple of times and even some of the other roller or they're not roller coasters, water <laughs> coasters, water slides, aqua coasters. Um, yeah. Aqua coaster. Um, so yeah, the early park I think is a big um, asset to have to get yeah. everything done that you want to get done. Do you get that at every hotel or is that a specific perk for only certain hotels? Is that a cabana bay thing only, or is that, that's a good question. I think it's every hotel. All the I'm hotels. Al- I'm almost positive. Yeah, and um, annual passes. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to look it up just to make sure. Has anybody stayed in a private cabana at Cabana or uh, Volcano Bay? Not for those prices. 
not for eight hundred dollars. I, I have friends who have. Yeah, I I got lucky right when they reopened for the pandemic. It was after the pandemic. I mean, it was my buddy's birthday, and we were able to get it for two hundred and fifty bucks, which was pretty fair between the yeah. four of us. You know, and I got to say, it was it was pretty amazing. Honestly, I would love to do it again, but yeah, yeah. I'm not paying a thousand dollars. I would have liked to have done that because I think having your own area that you can go yeah, to, it was having really your cool. own, like where you can store your stuff, I think that it would be nice. So if you were like in an off season, maybe when it didn't cost as much, yeah. you had a couple of families that were together that could split the cost. I think it would mm-hmm. be nice. So I think I know the answer. Sorry, hope to cut you off. I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask. I'm assuming the price of that cabana does not include your entrance in. No, 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 I knew it wouldn't, but I had to ask because there might be people listening might ask that question and you go, no, it's a theme park. No, I had to ask. Hope. Universal is cool, but they're not that cool. No. (laughs) Kyle, I was going to ask, don't they have like an iPad in the cabana where you can literally put your Tapu Tapu right there? That's awesome. Yeah. So that part was cool. So instead of kind of walking around trying to kill time while waiting to go on a ride, we were able to go on the iPad pick a ride, pick our wait time. Then they have a little flag at the edge of like uh, the railing that you put up and a server will come to you. So we'll just order drinks and food while we're waiting for our ride. It comes with like 10 bottles of water, 10 towels, and then your private locker. And uh, yeah, honestly, it was a great experience, but I don't know if it's worth a thousand dollars. That's why Tracy wants to, Tracy wants to stay in one just so she's like, I'm going to sit here and just have someone wait on me hand and foot for the entire time. I'm yeah. there and you lock and just <laughs> off and do what you want. It was awesome. <laughs> um, and you get a fruit plate oh, with nice. like cookies and fruit that's included too. That was a cool little perk. Nice. Who's the one percenter now, eh? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Even Michelle hasn't done that, I don't think. Um, we've mentioned it a bit already, but the Tapu Tapu. So for those who haven't, Rachel, I'm going to throw it to you this time because you've been quite quiet lately. So the Tapu Tapu, obviously it is the wearable thing on your wrist that you can book your attractions for and stuff like that. But you want to, and then anyone jump in, of course. But yeah, how, how dealing with that Tapu Tapu is. It's a terrible name, by the way. <laughs> it's sort of like a thicker Apple Watch. Uh, and it lets you, um, so you go up to little totems and you scan it and then it holds your place in the line. So like we were talking about the water coaster earlier, usually very popular, you know, you might see like 120 minute wait for that. And then instead of standing in line, you have it on your watch and it counts down every five minutes to tell you how your time's progressing. And one of the nice things is, is, when it says ride now, um, you can go back and, and get in the actual line, but you don't have to right away. You There's not like a hard set time when you have nice. to go. But it also, um, you can store your credit card in it, which is really nice because then I just ditch my wallet and my locker for the rest of the day. Um, and then you can use it so that when you buy lunch, you just scan it and it charges your, your card. And then um, I will say it comes with two snaps to secure it. And you definitely want to make sure every time I get on a water <laughs> ride, I make sure both are <laughs> locked on because the very first time I went, I lost it in the um, fast moving river oh, and no. they'll Same replace here. it for you. It's Raining. no big deal, but you do lose your place in whatever line you were in. Okay. So like if you had been like 15 minutes away from the aqua coaster, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta start all over again. Uh, so I always make sure right before I go down the slide, I'm like, are both snapped? Okay, good to go. <laughs> but there is a rule, isn't there? You can only, is it, you can only have one virtual line at a time. Is that right? Or is it, you can have the aqua coaster and one other. They cha- they've changed it a few times, haven't they? So yeah, one at a time but if it's a ride now so like for example like the mm-hmm. the body plunge or like the serpentine slides are kind of intimidating so they're usually a ride now you can hop on a ride now while maintaining your place in the other line okay mm-hmm. one of the interesting things i think we've talked about it as well so you mentioned that you can put your credit card on which is great you go and pay for your food and stuff obviously as an annual pass holder you cannot attach your annual pass onto it or can you no you cannot you still have to have that annual pass on you to scan to get your discount right yeah but what we did is we put our cell phones in a waterproof case that you put around your neck 
So then we just put it inside of that and then had the annual pass with us. And then I used my Tapu Tapu. Okay. Hope in the same situation, what have you done? Well, I was going to say, I don't have one of those fancy phone things, but I want to travel with Crystal because she seems like the best like, detail oriented. Yeah. I love it, Crystal. You're amazing. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, since they issue it to you every time, then you just use your annual pass to get in. But I know that if you um, link your credit card to your um, the universal app, then it should recognize if your annual pass. Okay. I believe. Am I wrong? Y'all correct me. I could be wrong. I'm not sure about that one. Whenever I've used my wallet in the um, app for the uh, Universal, I still have, to, have to put bring in it. my annual pass okay. information. So, like, for okay. example, going to buy something at, like, Voodoo Donuts or Leaky Cauldron, even though I'm using my wallet from the pass or from the um, Universal yeah. app, I still have to add in and scan my annual pass to get that discount. Okay. You know what? That makes sense now that I think about it because it's probably different point of sale systems that they use. So that makes sense. Disregard mm -hmm. my previous comment. It might make sense, but it doesn't make sense overall. This is where Universal is still so far yeah. behind Disney when it comes to a lot of little things like this. And I will yeah. say that even though on my Universal app in my wallet, I have every pass of my family on there, it was only my Tapu Tapu that would work. Like my kids mm -hmm. tried to use the Tapu Tapu to buy something and theirs did not work. Now, whether okay. I could go to customer service to try to link them, maybe, but it was only mine that worked. I think gotcha. you would, yeah. as, a, as a mother, knowing Tracy, I think you would like that power and control over the rest of your family. <laughs> you, 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 you can set spending limits on, <laughs> Even on that. Even better. So, yeah. Oh, that's, Good to know. that's yeah. interesting to know. Yeah. That's nice. Something Disney doesn't have. Yeah. So one thing I was actually going to ask leading off the back of that as well, and I think we've talked about it before. So again, that Tapu Tapu is supposed to make, so you don't have to carry everything around with you, but we've already established that you need, you, if you want to get your annual pass holder discount, you have to have your annual pass hold, right. your annual pass with you. But then also, as we're all adults here, we all like a beverage every mm -hmm. now and again. If you want to buy an alcoholic drink, you still have to have photo ID with you as well. So it doesn't negate you that. Do. Yeah. So it right. kind of yeah. like it's cool that you can have these things attached to it. But if you want to fully experience the park, you still have to have these things carried around with you. What do you guys do as far as having that ID with you as a rule? Crystal's got a little Apparently, cool little pouchy thing. <laughs> I look really old, so no one has ever carded me, <laughs> carded me there. But yeah, um, they're supposed but agreed, to, though, yeah, aren't they? They are. I, maybe I've because I've been there so much to the bar. Maybe they don't. They recognize me now. I don't hey, know. Hey, cool. <laughs> we are going one yeah. percent now, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> right. So maybe they just recognize me at this point. But um, yeah, I've never really. But in in that instance, though, my husband has um, one of those card holders on his cell phone. So he just puts my ID in there, okay. puts it into the waterproof case, just in case I need it. Anyone else? Rachel? Yeah, I usually okay. just have a zipper pocket on my bathing suit that I'll just throw my debit and ID in. Because, yeah, you still got to have your ID to buy drinks, whether or not you have your card on your Tapu Tapu. I will say, I've noticed that the bar towards the back, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's the one with the blue sails. Rachel's smiling. I think we're on the same <laughs> okay. page. Um, I feel like it's always a shorter line. So I always like either use the lockers back there or I we normally get our seating over by the entrance to the the fast river there. Just go Agreed. grab it and go grab a drink. And it's so much shorter than the one at the front. But again, if you had any yeah. issues with showing ID and stuff, what do you normally do with your ID? Or are you that? Oh, no, you, I'm old you get school. Carded. I just have I to think go you get must it. get carded as well because you look quite young. <laughs> I'm not going to ask a lady how young you are, but you make me feel old. <laughs> I feel like we should add that with the Tapu Tapu and your card being linked to it, you have to put in a pen when you yeah. use the credit card feature. So that way, if you're like me and you lose your Tapu Tapu, you don't have to worry about somebody picking it up That's and good. then scanning it yeah. and, and spending on your credit card, which is a nice feature. Because I'm assuming yeah. as far as your Tapu Tapu, you pick that up when you enter the park and set that up before you actually go into the park. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would, and I would really advise like putting your credit card information in the Universal app before you get there, so that you don't slow down the process of having to deal with all of that when you're actually at the park and wanting to have fun. Yeah, 
Sounds good. Cool. Right. We're going to move on to the reason the, mo- the reason that most people will be there. Anyone want to jump in as far as favourites, ones you shouldn't miss? I mean, obviously, the Krakatoa Aqua Coaster is the one thing that everyone should ride because it's like, where where else are you going to get to ride a, a, a proper, like, kind of what is a, a proper coaster, to be fair, in a water thing? Is it that good? It's pretty incredible, honestly. That's like the number one thing I make sure I never miss when I go, even if I'm only going for an hour or two because I'm staying on site. I always make sure I get to do the aqua coaster at least once. I don't like roller coasters and I I'll ride that one. <laughs> so yeah. It's not that yeah. scary. It's not, it was actually pretty intimidating to me at first because I'm like, well, it goes down a hill and you're just sitting in a little raft. But <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun. Now, if you're in the front, you get splashed with water and you can't see. So yeah, yeah that, you might want to wear some goggles if you're on the front row. But <laughs> Different ride experience up there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm usually... I'm usually in the back because I'm a little bigger than most of my friends. So <laughs> they always put me in the back. I mean, that's fair enough. So they can, yeah. so otherwise, if you're in the front, then no one can see anything. No one, <laughs> yeah. including yourself. Yeah, pretty much. It's like a solidly long ride, too. Like it goes on yeah. for a while. It's really, I feel like it's really worthwhile. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite ride at the park. I mean, most people's favorite ride at yeah. the park. I think aqua coaster is a good term for it because if you like roller coasters, you will really enjoy this ride. It's very different than going down a slide or being in a raft. It's a very unique experience. They use um, magnets to draw the, yeah. the uh, what do you call that, a boat <laughs> along. <laughs> yeah. And okay. so the vehicle, let's yeah, just so call it that. <laughs> that's like a really interesting sensation too, to, to feel that movement because you're not on a track. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty impressive, honestly. The first time I went on it, I was just kind of like trying to think. I'm like, how are they doing that? Because it really yanks you up the hill. Like, I was just kind of blown away. Yeah, because I suppose it goes against everything you expect from a yeah, water ride at, at a water park. When I got off, I was just asking the people who worked on that ride. I was like, how is it doing it? How is it doing it? And they're like, oh, it's madness. I'm like, oh, well, that it's makes a lot of sense. got to be like the people move of those linear induction modes. I'm mentioning Disney far too much on this podcast, by the way. I thought this was the unofficial Universal it's podcast. It's supposed to be, but it just, oh, I know. And I tell everyone else off for it, Crystal, I have to ask, as a person that doesn't ride coasters then, have you done the drop slides? No. No, no, no I didn't think no. But, but the rest of my family has, and they love them. They, they, my husband says that it's a little aggressive because he's yeah. a little bit and so, yeah, he says that pretty much hurt his back. But no, my kids love the drop ones. And even my son, my oldest son, who does not like roller coasters either, there's these ones called Oh No and Oh Yeah. So they mm. they are body slides, but then at the end, they have a drop down into a big, bigger pool. Oh, I love those. Yeah. Like a yeah. free fall. He actually really enjoys them. And it's funny because the lifeguards at the top of the slide, they'll always ask, you do know how to swim, right? And, oh, yeah. So they ask, like, how many times do you have to jump in for people at, at this pool? They're like five times you know it's like because you you drop into i think it's like a 10 foot pool yeah. at least yeah it's, it's yeah, and then you, people you, think you, that they can handle it but they can't right who's going well, think, to a water park who can't swim <laughs> oh i think you'd be, you'd surprised. be surprised yeah yeah, yeah. am i allowed to yeah. say then you deserve what you get at that point <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah but yeah, that pool's very deep. I, I think everybody assumes you're going to drop in and then be able to kick off the bottom. No, you can, it's like <laughs> at least 10 feet deep. I mean, mm-hmm. But I think it's a four-foot drop is oh yeah, and then oh no is like a six-foot drop mm-hmm. into the pool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are definitely, yeah, you don't want to miss that. Rachel, are you a drop slide person? I, I've i done the trap door slides. I've done all of them once, and I think they're more scary than Velocicoaster. <laughs> like, that, I agree. And they I do agree. a really good job of, like, when they, they, like, get you in the little tube, right? There's, like, this music that plays, mm-hmm. and there's the, the drums, and it just makes your heart beat so fast. <laughs> and then I didn't intend to ride the, the body plunge one, which is more intense than the, the serpentine slides, but... I went up the wrong staircase and it's 200 <laughs> steps up. So it was no. like either yeah. you know, 200 steps down or just, just go through the plunge. And so I was like, whatever, I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just going to go through with it. And it was, it was great, but it was more heart stopping to me because like in Velocicoaster, I feel very safe, right? Like there, yeah. there's, 
very intense, you know, people checking to make sure that the bar is in the right place. And um, this is literally like there's a trap door and it opens and you free fall for what feels like an eternity. I think it's like 30 seconds, but it's a long time. <laughs> so um, I've only done it once. I maybe will do it again someday, but that was enough for me to check it off the list and be like, that's the most terrifying thing I've ever done at a, hey, at a look, park. Hey, look, I'm going to throw Michelle under the bus. She says she will never, ever ride Rip Ride Rocket. And the thing that annoys me about that statement is she's never ridden it before. So she's going off other people's opinions. Rachel, you've ridden it. You know you don't like it. I'm never going on it again, but I've done it once. I can tick it off. And that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Like I've done, I'm going to mention another Disney ride, uh, Mission Space. I did it <laughs> once as someone who has incredible, incredible claustrophobia. I did it once, never again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the body, body plunge slide, it's, it's terrifying. I think the worst part was is all the water is splashing in your face, so you're getting waterboarded as you're going down. Brilliant. <laughs> that was the worst part for me is I couldn't breathe the whole way down. I can imagine it's like, um, have any of you guys done Summit Plummet at Blizzard Beach? Yeah, yeah. that one. I hate that one because you can't see over the edge. It just looks like you're going off like a cliff. Uh, you know my what I mean? sinuses were a mess the next day because I think the entire pool went up my nose. Yeah. It yeah. was not fun. Hope. Hold your breath, plug your nose. Are you a body, are you a, are you a drop slide person or are you like a hell no? no? No, I'm not. Let's just say that like Summit Plummet and I had a small wardrobe malfunction. Oh. And I think that's kind of scarred me for life. I mean, so I'm like, I'm, I will watch. I will go down to the pool where you can see them like zip through the clear tube. That's super fun to watch. But yeah, I will watch. Yeah. So what other highlights as far as rides? We'll get onto the Lazy and the Fearless River because I want to talk about them a little bit more. But as far as other water slides, anyone got any favorites? Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. Those are definitely the drop slides where you drop four to six feet off. of. That, that's definitely my favorite after Aqua Coaster. So that's like my number two. I'm going to mispronounce them. It's Maku and... Puihi. Yeah, there you go. Those, <laughs> I think those are really cute because they're named Wet and Wild. Name, you know, ah. in honor of the fact that the park used to be Wet and Wild. Oh, that's cool. And the one that's wet, you do get more wet on, and the one that's wild is a little bit more curvy. And that's a six-person saucer ride, so you can have up to six people on it. And that one's my favorite. It's like just intense enough. <laughs> they're fun when you get if you get other people in the raft with you you can have an absolute blast it's like going on Popeye and Blue Tours with it if you get <sighs> people who are just in for a good you have an absolute blast come on Crystal yeah. you were just there woman <laughs> I don't ride I don't ride <laughs> any of them any of them um I mean I've been on a couple of like the family ones um with the kids but i i don't generally ride the water slides there but my kids absolutely love every single one of them your kids are older kids i'm assuming they are i've got a 13 14 and right. 16 year old which is nice yes because you can just say go have fun yeah i'm gonna be <laughs> over here i'm assuming yeah. no one's took little little kids to experience volcano bit with them no why would you <laughs> no. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> well, I will say that that little um what's it called? Runamucka Reef. Yeah. Um that, my kids are actually they said just like this past time they said I wish I could go in there because it's a 40 <laughs> might be a 48 inch height limit in there, but it looks like a lot of fun okay. for kids. Cuz then there's the little one, isn't it, which I think is Tottihi Reef. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we don't know. We've got, we've got little kids. <laughs> also, do not let those kids fool you because I feel like every time I'm on the lazy river, you know that section where they have the squirt guns squirting the people on the lazy uh -huh. river? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've got like the best aim and they just follow <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> so Re funny. Yeah, because that's really something we never up. mentioned about the Tapu. Tapu, dude, there's also points around the park where you mm -hmm. can let water squirts off, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Yeah. Like so for cool. all those people yeah. that love those water squirters for Popeye and Blue Tours in Ireland, it's like you are going to be in hog heaven in Volcano. But I could probably <laughs> spend the day yeah. just squirting people around the park. It would be awesome. Hope, favorite yeah. rides there. Okay. I don't know if it counts as a ride. I count it as a ride. The Te Elwa, the Fearless River is my favorite. I could go on that thing all day. It just... Yeah. zips you right along and it's so fun and if you get to that one point where the big wave comes and the drums come and mm -hmm. everybody kind of screams <laughs> i just love that so i count it as a ride i don't know if you would but eh, 
I did say we were going to get onto the lazy river and that afterwards, but that's fine. That's fine. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry, Lee. No, it's cool. Like, it's, like the, 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 when we went to Blizzard Beach, the thing we spent the most time on was the, was the lazy river there. And there's, there's something about a lazy, like even a lazy river or, a, or a, a fearless river, as they call it. There's just something about them. I think you get a big bang for your buck because they're quite long. You know, you can mm-hmm. jump on it and stay mm-hmm. on. And it's a good way. I'm assuming it's like most of the water that you can hop on and off at certain points around the park, can you or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On both yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Both. See, that's mm-hmm. a, what a what a what a way to get around the around the park. It's awesome. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you could plan it out right, you know, you get on the lazy river there, go check in for this ride, then get back on, yeah. go around, you know. Now is the yeah, fast river. Fun slow enough that if you were like oh i've passed where i needed to get off there oh well <laughs> it happens it happens <laughs> both of the rivers you don't have to there's never a wait so that's nice so like yeah. you're wanting to if you have a long wait for another ride that you're in a virtual line for you can hop in either of the rivers and it doesn't ever affect your wait time now mm-hmm. am i right in assuming that you don't do you have to be in a raft like a rubber ring because there's rings isn't there but there's also what life jackets as well you can put on yeah can you you have to have those on though do you You the action river you wear a life jacket and the lazy river you get in a raft can you but you don't have to you don't have to swim it yeah yeah you can do that too even in the fearless one you have to no the fearless river you have to be in a life yeah that's what i thought yeah yeah Yeah. because i can imagine yeah hmm, that wouldn't be fun it's like when <laughs> no. they go and dredge those nets out underneath the hulk every night and pick all the sunglasses don't be dredging up guests at the bottom of the field <laughs> <Gosh. laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's just again the names are an interesting thing and there's which is the one that has the um the weight limit on it is that the drop slide? Several of them do actually a lot of because them, yeah. believe it or not even the um even the uh, aqua coaster has one mm. any of the typical like larger raft rides have them however i will tell anyone who's worried or self-conscious i know we probably all are you don't you won't really be able to see the number unless you turn around get at a specific angle they just have you all step on okay. a, basically a large it's not like one at a time typically it's at least two at a time so if anyone's self-conscious out there just know that <laughs> they do have a minimum weight limit on some of them as well we were there one time and a couple of girls weren't able to go on one of the raft rides because they didn't weigh enough <laughs> so <laughs> i i told them they can take my husband and he would go on it with them so that they could actually go on that ride Aww. that's interesting is it so what do they do if will they, like if you go to go on one and your group say there was four of you and it, it's too heavy will they split you up will they just tell you you can't or, or is it a Hagrid situation uh, not Hagrid a forbidden journey situation where they shame you in front of everyone I assume they just split you up I mean you know. they typically split you I have seen I did see one scenario where someone was turned away but that was that's the only time okay. I've seen that is once Strange, yeah, I've never seen it? anybody turned away but yeah, I, I would assume they would just split you up. On most of the rides, it they hold four to six, and so if mm-hmm. it's a um, issue, they can just have two or even sometimes one person go on it. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird because I know there was one specifically with the weight restriction on it, but they changed it so often when the park first opened. It was like, oh, we've raised it, and now we've lowered it a bit, and now we've raised it again. It's like, I don't understand... Is that those four slides in the back that used to be on the remember. raft slide down? I've never been on those. They're always closed. Oh, the Ponga Racers? Yeah. I don't know, I know why I remember that name. I never remember the other name. Because <laughs> it's an easy some one. Got, some people got injured on those like early in the park opening and like they've opened and closed and weight limits changed. I've never actually been on those right. just because they always happen to be closed when I'm there. I don't know what it was. I did go on those and it was funny. Yeah. I was telling my husband, I was like, sometimes when I go on these like really long body slides, I will like almost stop. And he was like, that's not going to happen. And it happened. So we get <laughs> to the end and he's like, Whew, and I'm just like squirming my way. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> I don't no. know what's wrong with my body or shape, <laughs> but please, any body shape, come to a water park, enjoy it. Don't be disturbed by the story. <laughs> that's the most embarrassing thing that 
eek, when everyone else is flying <laughs> past so you and you're like, oh my God. It was so bad. It's like we did the oh, only time gosh. I've ever been into Camp Jurassic. We did Pteranodon flies with the kids when they were little and we went down one of those little chewy Lucky. slides thing. Oh my God. Like I didn't think I was going to come out. It wasn't I was <laughs> stuck. We got so far down and because it goes like a really tight bend round. I was like, I don't, yeah. I don't think I'm coming out. And you're like, that thing where you, come on, we'll get there eventually. And then Tracy's coming down behind me and like, this isn't going to be fun. Um, so, you know, people, a lot of people going to water parks, myself included, have body issues. Um, what's the rules as far as wearing T-shirts or rash vests or anything like that on the rides and stuff? Does anyone, has anyone had any experience with that? My husband always wears basically like a swim shirt. That's never an issue for him. On so. everything. Because I, I, I seem to remember, yeah. I think it was, I'm sure the drop slides, you can't wear them on. I so, don't know. He wore it last okay. time we went. But if I, I remember correctly, the slides like, oh, yeah, and oh, no, where your body is directly on the slide and not a raft, I think they might have you take the shirt off. But... I think everything else you're welcome to keep it on because okay. I, I feel like I remember that happening to one of my friends who was wearing a shirt. And I know if you wear water shoes on the slides where your body directly touches the slide, they'll ask you to take them off every time. Why? I don't so know. Maybe... Oh, you know what? The drop slide. I'm sorry. He didn't go on that one. Okay. I was thinking of the, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. I apologize. Wrong yeah. drop. Drop at the end. Oh. Not drop at the beginning. <laughs> but then you still said he went on it with that. With that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I might have guy. changed. I don't know. And it was pretty hey. tight. It's not super loose. So Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. the whole point of those things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because I know, let's be honest, if any anybody with any sort of body issues, water parks are not the place you want to be, are they really? Not exactly. <laughs> no, and it doesn't matter. Everyone, <laughs> goes, everyone else is the same. And like, I don't care. They're not. That person doesn't look like me. There's always the, the muscle-bound meathead. And you're like, yeah, he looks all right. I'll walk around with his shirt off all the time if I looked like that. <laughs> But I don't, so I'm not going to. Um, anyone else want to throw in any comments about the rides or anything before we move on to the most important bit of the, the water theme park? And that will be food. Oh, there you go. <laughs> anyone? Nope. Um, I would recommend wearing water shoes because if you're planning on staying there all day, the mixture between sand and concrete, walking barefoot all day, it's like <laughs> yeah. sandpaper at the end of the day. <laughs> and not so just that. My yeah, after my yeah. first visit, that was one thing I always remember to do is bring water shoes. Yeah. The sand is nuclear. You, you'll yeah. see people running through the sand to get to a shaded spot, and then they <laughs> stop for a second. And then they run to the next shaded spot. Yeah. The, the sand is very hot in the wow. summertime. Wow, yeah. I will mm -hmm. say I use those little um, shoe holders that they have at the, a lot of the, the attractions, so I'll just wear my sandals around and then – take off yeah. my flip-flops when it's time for me to go on i've never had anyone take my shoes or anything so i love that when i saw those i was like oh this is great i'm not running around so you need to yeah, elaborate I, on them shoe holders well yeah. I, at the entrance of every ride there's kind of like some netted like little cubby area to okay. where i usually wear a hat and they'll make me take my hat off before i go on every ride and yeah i've never had my hat stolen or my shoes stolen I mean, it's not secured, but I'm like, yeah. you really think someone's going to steal, like, flip-flops? I wouldn't think so. If they were nicer sunglasses, maybe. But, yeah, it's just little, basically, netting, and you can just put your shoes right on there, and then you come that mm -hmm. way when you exit and just grab your sandals. Yeah, if you want to wear mm -hmm. somebody else's shoes that's had their bare feet in them, like, <laughs> it's taking no. your life into your own hands at that point, pal. Yeah. Um, Athletes foot. Right. Food and beverage is the last thing we want to talk about. No, Rachel. Food and beverage, because it was one of those things that when the park first opened, the menus, like one of the biggest things that Universal talked about when Volcano Bay first opened was pushing the food and the drink. It was it was all their posts were all about food and drink. And we covered it tons on the podcast. And then they kind of paired that menu back quite substantially after a couple of months. But um, I'm assuming popping in and out, Rachel, you've uh, you've sampled quite a few of the uh, menu items. Yeah, I've never had anything I didn't like. And in fact, I'm so obsessed with the coconut chicken salad that I've tried to figure out how to recreate it at home. <laughs> it's, and it's I, I wouldn't have thought like a chicken salad is what I'd want after a day at a water park, but it's nice because it's in the grab and go section. So you don't have to wait. And I feel like the restaurants are a little slow, especially in peak season. Um, 
but especially when you've been eating really terrible um park food for for days on end the chicken salad has like all these uh they've got like apples and grapes in it and Ooh. it's just it's really good I, I can't quite get it right in my kitchen at home even though universal posted a recipe themselves that yes. I've, I've used it's just still not you know you can't recapture the magic but um so that's my absolute favorite and so i pretty much get that every single time now but then i've had the macaroni and cheese with the jerk seasoned chicken Ooh. or uh, shrimp it's shrimp not chicken and <laughs> that's really good and then the longboard pizzas are you know they're pizza but they're pretty good yeah they so look those amazing are kind of the, those are pretty much the ones that I, I usually stick to. And the one thing about it is, is there are different things at all of the different restaurants there. So That's like good. if you don't see something on a menu that really that you fancy, keep going around. You're going to find something different at the next one. Everything is different. Um, they have a place where you can get tacos. They have um, they do have I was looking around. They have a vegan option at the North Pavilion. Um, it's like a vegan meatball bowl. So, but that was the only vegan option that I noticed at all of the different stops. Wow, that's interesting because it, the the show that we've just recorded that will come out next week was all about sort of dietary restrictions and requirements and allergies and mm -hmm. stuff. And to only have one vegan option, I feel like they have a lot of like possible vegetarian options, but maybe not vegan per se. And this place is kind of off the beaten path it's you won't notice it unless you're looking for it um it's on the front side of the volcano um before the main uh restaurant area that a lot of people go to it's called the north pavilion it is kind of back in an alcove but that's where you can find that vegan um option okay are you vegan by the way i will ask that question mm -hmm. Uh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> That's the perfect <laughs> I, I answer. I like my meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, but I do have a very picky child who will only eat very limited stuff and he can always find something there that he likes. Okay. That's good. Okay. One thing I will say um, about when we did do the preferred seating is I do remember the server saying something along the lines of, if you're vegan, vegetarian, let us know. We can always look at additional options. So yes. maybe even not if you have that seating, it might be worth it just to ask a team member. Yep. Maybe they can adapt one of the vegetarian options. I'm not sure. Um, but that's something to think about. Uh, well, we love the food at Volcano Bay. We love it. I love, there's a barbecue sandwich that I love. That's great. That's got like a pineapple slaw in it. We love the longboard pizzas. Um, I also really love the ice cream. I don't know if you guys have had it, the soft serve at the front. Yes. Um, no. It's it looks so amazing. good because it's, um, well, I normally end up getting like chocolate and vanilla because I'm a chocolate girl, but I'll have some of Danny's. And it's really great because it's a soft serve and it looks rainbow, but basically it's infused in the soft serve. So as the colors change, the flavors change. So you've got all these great fruity flavors. It's really good, and it's the only place you can get it on property. So it's definitely worth checking out. Okay. It's good. Very cool. Very good. Very good, yeah. Because so I'm just looking at the restaurants now. So we have Waka Wai Wai Eats. We have the Kanuku Boat Bar, uh, the Feasting Frog, which is the taco place, which is, I think, the place mm -hmm. I would be at most. Um, there is the Dancing Dragons. I do believe that's another bar. I find it funny. There's so many alcohol options. I think we've talked about it quite a lot on the podcast. There's a lot of alcohol served at Universal Orlando, a by lot. the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. It's crazy. Kyle, food experiences? Um, Yeah, the longboard pizzas are a pretty good go-to. Uh, I live in South Florida, so I get a lot of different taco places. I have to admit the tacos at the frog place there at Volcano Bay were kind of a letdown. They weren't up to par for me. Okay. So I I wouldn't recommend it. Honestly, the Bumblebee Man tacos are better than they were there. But uh, I had the barbecue ribs. Those were fantastic. I would definitely recommend those. And, yeah, the mac and cheese with the shrimp, I had that before, too. That was definitely a go-to. Definitely. Kyle, I think they said at the Cabanas they have, like, coconut shrimp or something. Do you remember uh, that? Not in my experience. I'm sure you could order it, but they didn't have any, like, as soon as you got there. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I heard there was, like, a few, like, secret menu items, I guess. Ooh, you, is that? Like, the preferred or the Cabana. So Really? Because I, I know the preferred, they had, like, 
I swear, we still dream of this log- <laughs> this logboard pizza. So if anybody finds it anywhere, tell me. It was like it had pork belly, plantains, Ooh. and like Asiago cheese. Sounds so wow. weird, but it was oh, fire. That sounds good. That it sounds was really good. So good. Yeah. Well, now I really want to go back to the cabana. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try that. <laughs> not for those prices. Wow. I'd want yeah, someone to feed me for those prices. Correct. <laughs> well, I will say if you go in the off season, like in December, I mean, generally it doesn't get super cold in South Florida, but it will get down to like 60. All the pools are heated. Everything is heated except for the aqua coaster. So just go on that last because you'll be freezing after. <laughs> Good. I mean, if it hits the temperature when we were over in February in 2020, uh, a water park would not be fun. I have never, ever <laughs> been that cold in Florida before. It was freezing. Yeah, yeah. it hasn't gotten that cold in it later years. But miserable. Um, I think we've about, because anyone, have I, is there anything we should have covered that we haven't? Has anyone got anything in their notes they want to throw out? Because I know people have of notes. Of course I do. Well, then, Crystal, <laughs> there, you can there, have the floor. There's one thing I do want to mention is when you talk about wanting to get a cabana, a lot of people want a cabana because they want to get out of the sun. If mm-hmm. you go in and you go to the back of the volcano in the entrance of the Fearless River, they have some covered there's like permanent shelter where you can go and you can get an abundance of seats that are underneath complete shade okay. it's not just like an umbrella it's like a wooden pergola type thing so if you really really want to be out of the sun and you want to set up camp i would go first thing all the way to the back get yourself a seat there there's there there's a couple other places that have some places like that as well so don't give away that spot <laughs> so i mean that that's a nice alternative if that's what you want is just like a shaded spot okay cool rachel i know you have notes have you got anything you would like to talk about <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say if you do end up going on a really busy day um and you're trying to ride everything if you put a little bit of strategy into it, you can certainly get it done. Like I would hit the aqua coaster first on your Tapu Tapu because that ride only gets longer as the day. Go- like I've seen that ride up to like over 200 minutes before. Wow. Um, and then just really prioritizing like the rides that um, like the, if you're going to do the body plunge or the serpentine slides, like the, fit the intimidating ones in when they're right now because people aren't <laughs> wanting to do them while you're on that really long wait for the for the aqua coaster and then that way you're killing two birds with one stone and you're more likely to hit everything in one day absolutely hope Kyle. anything you want to throw in uh yeah definitely bring water shoes <laughs> <laughs> that's my one biggest tip that was my first time that was my biggest regret and yeah I- if you could get in early you know, if you're staying on site or you're a pass holder, that extra hour yeah. or even 30 minutes will definitely help a lot. I never wear water shoes. I always walk around barefoot. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm probably going to pick up a disease of some kind, but we'll figure it out it's, later. It's not even a germ thing for me. I guess I just have sensitive feet. Yeah. <laughs> you got I, it, Rich. It's I called COVID. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a runner, so my feet are, uh, um, yeah, they're, they're not pretty so that probably does assist me yes. in handling these the heat of the, the ground probably yeah hope anything no i would just say i would just encourage everybody to visit at least once like yeah. even if you're someone who's been to other water parks or other water parks in the area it's just a completely different experience i think at least for me especially the first time i went i was just so surprised at the level mm. of detail, at some of the the pluses, like having the tapu tapu to hold your place in line, and just little details that I think just make it so different. So I would say, if you're on the fence, do it. Go for it. It's worth it. Absolutely. I think it's it's a shame because I seem to remember pre pre pandemic. weren't the wasn't there a time when they offered annual pass holders like a day ticket to Volcano Bay for something like I seem to remember it being like twenty five bucks or something. It was crazy. Like they were doing a pass holder offer, obviously, for if you didn't have the three park pass. But like for 25 bucks to get into Volcano Bay was like, why not? Yeah. Just to go for a wander around and something to eat. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's stunning. Like, I think, I think Crystal's the, the perfect example. If, even if you're not into 
doing slides and stuff, you can still go mm-hmm. and have an absolute blast in there for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it was that important to my family that I actually upgraded every body's pass to a preferred pass this last week because all the other passes it had a block out date so okay. i was like well it's that important and we went you know a couple of times so i said well you know if you paid for a ticket to go for a day or just upgrade the passes yeah so that mm-hmm. we can go yeah for definite i was just someone's going to mention um obviously you can get express passes anyone bought express passes for volcano beer I have not, and I'm still kind of confused on how it works. Is every ride just a ride now, or yeah, I, I still don't know how it works. If Express, I don't know if it'd be worth it. No, that's what I was going to ask. If Express works the same as it does in the parks, have you ever felt yeah. like buying it would have been to your advantage? No. I mean, if it was like under fifty bucks, maybe, but I doubt it is. I mean, I've never even I've been in during the summer. Like it's never been that busy to where i was like oh i wish i had an express pass i'm going to look up the price of express passes for volcano bit let's have a look i will add something real quick that if you guys have the photo package that you purchased at the parks it does work there as well they have different mm-hmm. cameras that are on the slides you just have to go to mm-hmm. customer service and link your tapu tapu and those photos will pop up on your okay, that's account cool. Mm-hmm. So a one day express for two day would have cost you one hundred and twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah, that's not worth it. I don't <laughs> no, think. no, you have really no problem getting on every ride that you really want no. to get on. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is only available. It's available on Krakatau, Punga Races, Maku, and Puihi, Honu. Ika Moana, going through all the names now, Tonga of Taniwa Tubes and Reiki of Taniwa Tubes, <laughs> Carla and Tainui Body Slides and Koto Kiri Body Plunge. So a vast majority of them, but it says, skip the virtual lines at all participating rides and attractions at Volcano Bay. One use per attraction. Um, it's interesting that even staying at one of the premier hotels that you don't get express, but you get express pass for the parks, but not for Volcano Bay. Yeah, that didn't make sense to me because I did ask about that when I was at Portofino, you know, one percenter and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and we w- and we went to the water park. I was just like, wow, you know, the m- money people spend and get expressed for the regular parks. I mean, Volcano Bay, I don't see why it wouldn't be included because I mean, no. no one really gets expressed there because it's not entirely necessary. It would be interesting to see what the uptake of express passes at Volcano Bay would be on a daily basis. Yeah, because it's—I mean, it's costing them nothing to offer it, so they might as well. Mm-hmm. Even if a couple of people buy it, then you're still making money off it. But it's just—it's such a strange one, isn't it? I've never sort of talked to anyone who's felt like they've needed express pass for Volcano, but it seems, it seems Me a bit strange. Um, one last thing I've realised we haven't mentioned, and that is Vol, the spirit of the volcano. Have we all met Vol? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, is that <laughs> yeah. inside the volcano? Yeah. I'm taking through. Kyla yeah. hasn't then. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I, I walked. Th- yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love Very stuff. Well I love it. it. Yeah, any any sort of interactive element with a, a real person is I I love that yeah. Universal have still added that in there. Mm-hmm. I have always meant to, but I can never figure out where the entrance is, <laughs> even <laughs> though I've been like eight times. I it cannot is. figure out how to get into that part of the volcano. <laughs> The park is a little confusing at times. Yeah. If you haven't, if your first time, it will kind of throw you off. Okay. It's, so yeah. Study the map and watch video Definitely. walkthroughs would be a good uh, a good idea then. I was lucky I had a Definitely. tour guide with me, so I didn't have to worry any of that. I just followed along oh. and went where I was told. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is this has actually been really good. Thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate you coming on because, like I say, it's we there's, there's only really Chris on the podcast that goes. Um, and he hasn't been for mm-hmm. quite a while, and it is one of those things that I, I do feel sad that we don't cover it much on the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. So I really appreciate you guys coming on to uh, share your love of Universal's water theme park. Thank you very much, guys. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to wrap up this episode as we always do. I know it's normally say another Universal is, but I'm going to wrap up with four Universal is. This is a new one. We've never done this before. We've never done four before. Uh, and I've asked my four guests to come up with theirs. Kyle apparently didn't know until the last minute. So I hope <laughs> you've got one. 
Um, but don't forget, if you want to get involved, all you've got to do is let us know what you think Universal is in three words or less and try and keep it clean. Alexa Lerrero or Zavala. She's Zavala now, isn't she? I am looking at you, girl. Um, and send them to us at podcast at you or podcast.com or via social media, however you want to get them to us. But for this episode, I am passing it over to, who did I say first? Hope, it was you. Universal is memories old and new. That's four. Don't. Don't count the and. Like, Dang it! I was gonna try. <laughs> I literally have been thinking about this, and all day I've been like, "Danny, what about this?" And he's like, "That's lame. That's lame." And then, wow, just Very give me supportive. a try. <laughs> I'll let you off. Thank you. <laughs> Universal is heaven on earth. Universal is my next vacation. Universal is my whole world. Cool. That's going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. And we will see you next week. That was another episode of the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast, the best and only podcast about Universal Orlando on the island. Check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. For all the podcasts, news, and articles, check out our blog at UUOPodcast.com. Send us your questions, comments, and listener debate submissions to podcast at UUOPodcast.com. Join the Producers Club by emailing us at UUOPproducers at gmail.com. Listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Check out our friends, the Theme Park Duo, for all your other theme park news. So until next time, this is Amity Six. Call off the Marines. We're coming home. <laughs>